Hello. Hi, Tanmay. Hello and welcome. I am Payal Krishnan. And as you all know, we are gathered here today to be talking about money matters. That's an important uh, business to be talking about, right? Yes. Hi, I can see everybody saying inundating me with hello. Hi, Srivats. Yes, Ruchi. Hi, Neil. Mr. Yadav. Hi, Mamta. Hi, Pratham. Hi, Deepak. All right. It's great to see receive all your highs, Mr. Ved Vyas. Okay. I um, this presentation or this webinar is for parents. So, are all of you parents? Yes, you saw Rav's mother. That is Ruchi Bhuya. Okay. Mr. Mandal, yes. Okay, it's great to see all of you here taking out time on a weekend, um, which is a Saturday and at four o'clock is when we are starting this series of webinars that we've planned for you. And this is the first one in the area of money matters. Hi, Mr. Neil. Hi, Mr. Mukund Patak. All right, so I'll begin with a small question to all of you. When was the last time you all uh, had any discussion with your children uh, around money? Mukund is a student, OK? OK, so um, yes, we're still doing the introductions. It's great to see all of you all so excited. OK, Sushanta so says they have that they have never had a discussion. Amin says yesterday. Okay. Yeah. So um, conversations that revolve around money and discussions that involve finances are often those in which we do not want children to be involved. Uh, we consciously try to keep children away. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but if you realize this, but as parents, while we may not realize this yet, uh, we are actually not doing a very good service to our children uh, by not exposing them to the finer nuances of handling money and related concepts. Yeah, so uh, all conversations that revolve around finances and money, we try to keep uh, children, particularly very young children, away from those discussions, and it is actually putting them at a very disadvantageous position with respect to understanding all that is there with respect to handling of finances and money. Uh, is there a problem? You can't hear me. Is, uh, Pratham, can you um, hear me now? Can you? OK, I'll just quickly take a check with everybody else. Um, can you all hear me? Yes, all right. OK, so um, yes, so do, do you all agree that uh, a good handling of finances sort of is a life skill that your child should be prepared for? Yes. Yes, OK, which is why we decided to do this very important uh, webinar for you on how it is exactly that you can go about talking about money to your child. And uh, we really believe that no age is a very small age to start talk child about money from the age when your child can start understanding words and sentences you can actually begin your child's financial training yeah all right so um moving on what then is really financial literacy okay as the slide here says it is the ability to use knowledge and skills to make effective money management decisions all right. So because it is an ability and because there are skills involved, it, it is very obvious that you can learn how to teach or impart good financial training to your children. Correct. Which is why it is an ability to use uh, knowledge and skills to make help them make very good uh, money management decisions. All right. Now, uh, why are you attending this workshop? OK, so very quickly, what you can expect out of this workshop. OK, I, I believe there is some uh, issues with respect to um, the audio. Yeah, I think you will have to re log in as uh, my co moderators just advising you. Mr. Neil Parke, can you re, re log in and if that helps? 
Mr. Mukund, can you hear us now? All right, perfect. Uh, Neil, you'll have to go back to the banner where you clicked from. Did you sort of click a, a banner on the website? Hi, Mr. Ramkrishna Vibhute. All right, the others can hear. Uh, 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 only a few of you are facing that difficulty, I can see. All right, so we'll move on. Um, I hope the others can join us very soon. Yeah. Okay, now why this workshop? Uh, it is to tell your child the relationship between earning, spending, and saving. Yeah. Um, so there is these three components of earning, spending, and saving. Earning, of course, that you, everybody has a job or a salary to get at the end of it. Uh, and there is um, money that is coming in home. That is the earning part. Spending is where we spend it. And saving. Saving is a very important um, aspect of the entire training on financial uh, planning and f financial training because saving t teaches your child to delay gratification. Yeah. It also talks about um, in this we will be also talking about helping your child understand the value of money. Okay, uh, and it will help pre prevent your child from developing wrong attitude towards money or finances. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out uh, how many of you all are having a problem uh, with the audio. Um, yeah, Neeru can hear me. Uh, Kushagra Kapoor, can you hear me? All right. Okay, so most of you all can hear. The others, I would request you to re log in. Uh, the URL would be, the link would be on the uh, Merit Nation website when you log in with your child's paid account. There will be a banner that you can click and which will allow you to. Um, re-login into this uh, webinar. All right. Okay. Now, uh, one question that you all will probably ask me is, what is a wrong attitude towards money or finances? Now, um, can your child develop a wrong attitude towards money? Do you think that is a possibility? Yes, Mr. Yadav, how is that? How, how, how can that happen? Now, imagine a scenario where your child goes to school and he picks up from a friend that all the rich people are lucky or that wealth is a uh, outcome of luck. Then do you think your child will behave, will learn how to handle uh, money responsibly? Will he learn the right skills to earn money and then handle it responsibly? No, right? That is because uh, your child would grow up believing that all the people who have money or all the people who are rich are indeed having luck on their side. So their motivation, their desire to do hard work and earn money will probably be very diminished. Yeah. So uh, the other important point, therefore, that we need to ensure as parents would be that our child get the right, develop the right attitude towards money so they need to know that uh, all the people who are or even your parents are not uh, people who just sort of sitting at home and earning money they have earned it through their hard work and some really smart choices yeah so that is why um, the attitude uh, that you need to have towards um, money and finances uh, should be sound and you should be able to ensure that that is what your then picks up okay Right now, um, why in this workshop, what are the aspects that we are going to cover? Now, uh, we'll first begin with a self-assessment. So I'll ask you all 
uh, some questions. You will see those questions on your screen and you have to respond with a yes or a no. And uh, then we will know how most of you all are thinking about some key aspects with related uh, related to the issue of financial uh, management and skills to your child. We'll also talk about what is money. We'll talk about earning money. We'll talk about needs or wants. We'll talk about spending choices and we'll talk about saving for short term goals. So this will be the broad agenda of this workshop. All right. Now, uh, moving on, I'm assuming that people who have not been able to um, sort of re-log in have got the link uh, and are able to lo log in now again and the audio is better. All right. OK, now. Um, OK, what is your attitude towards money? That is an important question that as parents you need to answer. Is your attitude towards money negative? Is it that of avoidance? Because if that is, then you all know very well that children very uh, easily copy what the adults do in the house. So some points of self-reflection uh, that you need to know would be, for example, what do you do when you have bills uh, coming into your mail? Do you throw them away? Because that is a way of avoiding having to pay them right then and there. Or do you have a regular time that you set aside where you can prepare the family budget? Uh, do you do those tasks very religiously, meticulously, without fail? Do you invest? Okay, now these are some questions that you could ask um, yourself to evaluate your attitude towards finances and money. All right, so therefore, uh, again, I'm repeating uh, what I just said is that to evaluate what your attitude towards money is, you need to understand whether that is one that of avoidance and is it a negative attitude? Because if it is, then that is what the children will easily pick up. They will also treat everything related to finances and money as an annoyance and would rather avoid it. And that will not be a very healthy attitude for them to pick up. All right. Now, um, like I said, there will be this uh, little question that I will ask. Um, these You will see these questions on your screen. And uh, please respond with a yes or a no. OK, I've already I'm seeing that uh, people are already uh, responding to it. So I will know um the group that is attending this webinar today all of your parents what you all feel about it yeah so you can see these questions on your screen please respond to each of these questions the yes or the no individually i will allow you two three minutes to finish it I would like all of you all to respond to these questions, please, on your screen. Very nice. I see a lot of you have already finished responding. In another minute or so, I will uh, quickly share the overall results of how you all feel about these issues. Vedang, you have to respond on your screen. That is how your response will be recorded. Not on the chat, please. OK. So um, to the question, do each of my children have some money to manage without my interfer interference? A majority of you, 52% of you have responded with a no. OK, to the question, do I use money as a reward or punishment? I see most of your answers lying between a sometimes and a no. OK, um, 
Yeah, so a very few people have marked it a yes. To the question, do I allow my children to make their own decisions about money when there are alternatives? Um, most of you have responded with a yes. A significant uh, number of you have also responded with no, and very few indeed have said sometimes. So, okay, which has been which is good news actually. Now uh, to the question, do I help my children find extra ways to earn money appropriate to their abilities and skills? Um, it is equal actually, equal number of you um, are saying yes and equal number of you are saying no. It is indeed heartening to see that at least some of you are trying uh, to look for opportunities to help your children make some extra money by doing things around in the house. Now, do I allow my children to make mistakes related to money and help them to understand the consequences? I'm very, very happy to say that most of you, 42% of you, have responded by saying a yes in the affirmative. That is indeed very nice. Samayita, do you agree to this question that you allow your children to make mistakes related to money and help them to understand the consequences? Okay, so uh, while she's responding, I hope everyone has finished um, attempting these questions. Then we can move on. Yes, uh, Samita, thank you so much for responding. Okay, so then we move on, and uh, I want to I want you all to really honestly answer the question: How did you do? OK, now to give you a sense of how you did, if you had three or more yes answers, that means you are actually helping your child learn money management skills. And there's a big uh, clap to all of you for that. OK, if you have got less than three yes answers, then there's probably a lot that you can do to help your child learn good money management skills. Now, um, for the complete, this is only five questions. For the complete questionnaire, you can write in to me at this email ID that you now see on your screen, which is expert underscore Payal Krishnan at meritnation.com. Okay, I will have this on a frame again, on a screen again. And so those of you who have pen, paper, phone handy, please do make a note of this email ID. When you write in to me, I will send you the complete questionnaire that will help you evaluate your responses with respect to how much you are doing to help your children learn money management skills. All right, then moving on, we will now get started with some key aspects that you need to focus on when you are teaching your children um, how to manage finances better or basic aspects related to uh, financial literacy. What are the aspects that you need to focus on with your children? What is money? That is where your discussion can start. Okay. Now, for those of you who have, uh, who are parents to slightly smaller, younger children, say in class five um, or so, you, you can probably go back to uh, assess their understanding of. Um, what is it that uh, uh, helps them uh, do with money that means what is it that they can really do with money uh, there is somebody who's asking me for email id here i will write that to you uh, in the end that will be there so please come with me as we move on in the webinar all right now um before money was invented you can even explain to your children that people used to engage in the barter system now you all have heard of the uh, barter system as parents yes Have you all heard of what is the barter system? Yes. OK, so when you are talking about uh, financial literacy and educating your child with aspects to managing money better, you can start with what is money. We can start talk about how people earlier used to exchange goods and services in lieu of uh, money. Why do you think that was a very awkward and uh, cumbersome method to be used. You can ask your child that and you'll be surprised to, to hear your child give you those reasons why probably barter system did not work out. Your child will say things like, uh, oh, maybe it was too much of the too many quintals of rice. It was heavy. Uh, so it was very inconvenient 
which is when uh, the introduction of coins made all of that easy. Yeah. So, um, so, so for earlier there was barter, then there is coins, and with coins, all of that inconvenience associated with the things, the perishable goods uh, becoming spoiled, the uh, issue related to uh, bulk, all of that got uh, handled, and coins came in. So this can can be a little background that you can use to help understand, uh, to help explain to your really little children about uh, money and the value of money okay now um but earning money is the next important aspect that you need to be focusing on now what are the basics in earning money you have to first tell your child that money has to be earned yes this might sound very simplistic to you but it is indeed not you know there are many small children who really believe that um when mom or dad insert the ATM card and all the uh, money comes into their hands, that is where the money comes from. It's a storehouse there and they just need to go and bring it and uh, it is money has come home. Now, um, I have a daughter. She's now um, a preteen, but when she was really young, she asked, used to ask me precisely that, that um, mommy, uh, you, and I used, would tell her that we don't have money right now and I can't buy you this gift for whatever reason. She's like, oh, but when you, you can just go there and you can just, you know, use your card and you can bring all the money home. So the children at that age, around uh, eight, nine, 10 years, maybe they do not really have this understanding of uh, the fact that money needs to be earned. So that is a very important point. That is why I'm emphasizing on it a little. Um, the next point is that a job lets you earn money, which is a wage or a salary. Okay, this is another understanding that you can impart to your child that it is through a job that you can earn uh, money. And the fact that the skills are needed for different jobs and that people choose a job based on their interest and skills. Now, as you can see, this can sort of set the tone for you to have a career kind of a discussion also with respect to your uh, with, res with respect to your little one. So you can sort of pave the way for having that conversation when you start talking about how people choose jobs based on their likes and dislikes, their skills and their abilities. And that job helps them bring home a wage or salary. And that is how money is earned. OK, so uh, the next question that um, will therefore probably be asked to you of your by your children would be uh, that can I earn money too? Yes. So the answer to that is a big yes. Yeah, you can tell your children that, yes, you can earn money too. Now, can, can you tell me what are the ways in which you can possibly earn? Uh, you can possibly tell your child that they can earn money. Painting, that's interesting. Yes. OK, w what are the ways you think your child can earn money? If, if your child were to ask you, I, I understand that uh, all of you are parents of uh, children who are in class five, six or seven. Now, uh, by dancing, you really want your child to earn money by dancing. I'm not sure if that is a very good idea. OK, tabla. No, no, no. What I mean is now, 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 at this age, how can they earn some money? Reward for good behavior. Yes, Devashish. Thank you so much. That could be one. Helping at home, Nidhi, I will come back to that. That is a good response, but it also has its pitfalls, okay? So I will come back to that. Doing some work asked by parents, okay? Scholarships, that is interesting, yeah? When we get kids get trophy or gift home, okay? So you all have given me all the answers. Now, there has to be something that is uh, a, 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 a right answer and something that is a wrong answer. Is that how it is? Okay? No, so actually uh, there are a couple of ways in which you can tell your child that they can earn money. Now those two that I have put on the screen sort of uh, cover all of that. Yeah, somebody saying good behavior like brownie points. Thank you, Vedang. That indeed is another one that I would want to come back to later. It can work both ways, you see. Okay, so um, allowance. Okay, what we in India understand as pocket money. How many of you all give pocket money to your children? 
So most of you do, if not already. You, okay, some of you don't. Yeah, yeah, most of you do. I can see a lot of yeses coming in. All right, some don't. Now, uh, please understand that uh, the decision to give pocket money is a very individual decision it, because every family has a unique financial situation and there is really no right or wrong answer to whether you should or should not give uh, pocket money to your child. Okay, that each will vary depending on the family situation and the values that you have. Okay, the other way that uh, some of you have already sort of uh, written in the chat is doing specific things around in the house. Yeah, so which sort of sums up uh, all the responses that you gave, that you all gave with respect to doing things in the house for good behavior. Yeah, so there are two broad uh, ways in which you can reward your child. One is allowance, pocket money, or by doing specific things around in the house. Now, this brings us to the question whether it should be gift whether it should be reward or whether it should be income. OK, now we move on to the next question, uh, next slide where I will tell you the brief um, highlights of each of these and which one uh, probably is a better way uh, to um, give allowance to your children. Now, a uh, gift, as you can see, the uh, a negative associated with gift is uh, listed there. Now, uh, you all understand what a gift as uh, money would mean, right? When relatives uh, give gifts of cash to your children, yes. So uh, the drawback with that is that there is really no real sense of achievement or appreciation. Yeah. And uh, the most important one is that it is rather irregular. Yeah, so you do not know whether on that occasion that you will get that your child will get that gift or not. But you know, it is all subject to chance. So it is a there is no real sense of achievement and B, it is irregular. OK, the uh, uh, the good thing about gift is that, of course, it is easy. To, yes, somebody said festival. So you do get gifts on festivals. That is correct. And the highlight of a gift is that from your child's point of view, it is easy to get right. The child doesn't have to do anything, uh, but just by being who he or she is, the child can get the gift. OK, now uh, the other uh, type of allowance is reward. OK, now this is on successful completion of some tasks in the house. Yeah, now uh, uh, like we may have that if you make your room, if you make your bed, if you clean your room, if you clean your study table, then you will get this as a reward. Right. So uh, the negative of that is that um, and many parents um, uh, probably will agree that uh, by rewarding your child for good behavior, which is why I said I'll come back to that response that had come a couple of seconds ago, is uh, by rewarding your child for good behavior, you're actually reducing your expectations from your child to a monetary figure. Yeah. So what about regular duties? Wouldn't you want your child to be um, doing unpaid tasks in the house? For example, just by virtue of being a, a part of the family, you would want your child to be doing certain things, right? So if you equate everything with money, then possibly you are uh, not allowing your child to develop that sense of responsibility as being part of the family. Yeah. The uh, good thing about reward is, of course, it is regular. And uh, the second, and that is the more important one, is that there is a certain sense of appreciation. Yeah, because you will reward only something that you like uh, or um, you appreciate in your child. And there is therefore when a child gets a reward for something, whether it is good behavior, good grades, good performance and anything else, then um, uh, there is a certain sense of appreciation that is associated with that. Right. The third kind of allowance is income. Now, um, income, which is when there is a job to do in your the child is not actually expected to do that job. All right. So um, uh, the drawback of that is that it is variable and irregular, uh, which is fair. Uh, and the highlight, however, sort of uh, overrides all the other um, uh, types of allowances is that it works like real life and there's a very strong sense of achievement. Now, uh, let me explain what I mean by income. Uh, income is when your child does certain tasks in the house uh, which are over and above what he or she is expected to be doing. 
Okay, so for example, I'm just giving an example. It could be different in your case. For example, if you expect your 11 year old to make uh, the bed or keep his study table clean, then that is something that you expect uh, your child to do. It will not be something that you would want to pay him for. OK, but there could be some other tasks like uh, maybe running an errand for you, like going to the uh, shop downstairs and getting milk uh, or whatever else you want to, him to buy on certain occasions, watering the plants, helping dad or mom clean up the car, uh, taking the pet out for a uh, probably uh, a walk. And uh, those could be uh, again, I'm saying could be because these rules can vary from family to family, depending on what you are comfortable with. But those could be uh, opportunities for your child to earn some extra money. Yeah. And uh, uh, please understand that uh, I will delve a little more into the income system of allowance. You have to agree upon how much a particular job is worth. So it can't be decided at that moment itself. Uh, it will have to be pre-decided that, OK, if you go out, uh, um, if you water plants uh, for me every once every week or twice a week, then this is the amount that you will get as an income. This is your chance to earn money. OK, so you can have this entire list of tasks and how much you're willing to compensate your child if the child does that. OK, and you have to basically write down all the jobs and agreed upon payment. OK, you have to make it very clear to this uh, to, to, to the child that your child gets time to do these paying jobs only after the completion of the regular responsibilities. So as a child and as a part of the family of your um, as a part of the family, as a, as a member of the family, the child will be expected to do certain things which you will take for given. OK, those will be the unpaid tasks and over and above, like probably studying for exams, finishing homework on time. You don't want to reward your child for doing all of that. No. Over and above that, you can create a list of tasks that your child can use as opportunities to earn some extra money. That is how the income system of allowance works. OK, now uh, let's move on. Needs and watch. That is my, going to be my next uh, topic of conversation um, for uh, things. Now uh, for this. Uh, needs are things that we need to survive. There is slight formatting issue in the slide. Please forgive me for that. Now, uh, do we understand as parents the difference between needs and wants? Yes, OK, that is nice. So needs are things that we definitely need to survive. Yeah, and wants are things that we would like to have. Yeah. So um, so how about doing this little exercise with your child about uh, helping them distinguish between needs and wants? OK, from a very early age, you can encourage your child to maybe flip through magazines or while you're going shopping, you can encourage the child to think about it really deeply, whether it is a need or it is a want. Yeah. Now, uh, interestingly, I have a some handouts that I can share with you when you write into me uh, and you can use those handouts as worksheets with your children. These are colorful handouts that uh, your ch children will love and to get those handouts, you just need to write into me at expert underscore pile Krishnan at meritnation.com. OK, now uh, please make sure that you have those handouts, particularly with the younger kids. Uh, they will just love doing uh, those worksheets. Yeah. OK, now uh, just to give you further examples of what are needs and wants. Now, uh, clothing, medical care, like shelter, like your house, transportation and basic utilities are all needs. OK, and wants could be cell phones, electronics, you know, my iPod, um, iPad, jewelry, magazines, movies, television, toys and any kind of video games. The list is endless actually for wants, the new phone. Um, yeah, so uh, all of these are wants. Now, uh, why is this understanding of the difference between needs and wants so important? Because children need to understand that there is a finite or there is a limited supply of money that pays for all the goods and services that the family needs and wants. OK, so there is a fixed amount of money 
and the families needs and wants have to all come from that fixed amount. OK, so to help your child and we're talking about small children here, so to help them understand uh, uh, this fact that there's a finite supply of money, one could use a family budgeting uh, pie chart or a worksheet, something like what you see on your screen. It's a very simplistic pie chart. It need not be very accurate, but all that it aims to do is make these broad heads uh, um, where you can sort of show how uh, under these various heads the family money is going every month. OK, so the broad heads that I have used uh, is uh, housing, saving, uh, savings, clothing, entertainment, uh, something under the category of miscellaneous and food yeah okay so you can again i have uh, uh, this worksheet as well that you can use with your child you can ask your child to prepare uh, what they think is going to be the family budgeting pie chart with respect to your unique how, uh, financial situation your, your unique family and you can uh, uh, and have a discussion with your child help them understand this concept that there is a finite amount of money that goes into the family's needs and wants remember to write into me at that email id expert underscore pile krishnan at meditation.com to get your copy of that worksheet all right now uh, the other that I would like to touch upon is uh, spending choices. Okay, now um, do we all make choices in life? Yes, we do. Yeah, you all made a choice about uh, whether or not to attend this webinar today. Yes, and those of you decided to attend uh, are here today. Yeah, so we make choice at practically every minute of our lives. Do I make these choices, do you think? Yes. What do you think? Do, do our children make these choices as well? Some kind of choices. Yes, they do. Yeah. All of you agree that they make choices, right? So uh, if, if, whether it is in school, which friend to talk to, which friend should I share my lunch with, which friends should I invite on my birthday party? Yeah. So all of these are choices that children also make. Yeah. Now, uh, my next question to you, therefore, is should we let our children make these choices, especially when it comes to finances and pocket money and handling money? Should we let them? There is a risk involved, right? What if they make a wrong choice? Are we able to uh, live with that, them making a wrong, wrong choice? Yes, that is a very, very important question that we need to understand and ask ourselves that are we to live with a wrong choice that our child is might make at the event of handling uh, money okay now to help your child make a choice what you could do is um, you could ask him to write about so for example your child wants to buy uh, something so you you may encourage your child to write about all the reasons that they uh, all the reasons for which they feel that they should buy that item and all the reasons uh, that they feel that they should not buy okay so that will help them leave um, evaluate whether or not they should go ahead and buy th buy that you can also encourage your child to make good spending choices by allowing your child to hear you ask questions like uh, do i really need to buy that now um can i um get a better deal for this somewhere else so again it is a very important thing that i want to bring your attention to which is that if you as parents um are often seen deliberating taking time spending some time thinking about things before you make a buying decision your child will understand that yes you have put in some thought to it and it was not an impulse buying okay and believe me children as you all know really like to copy adults around and you are their best role model yeah so um so the best way to do that is if you yourself have the right attitude with respect to evaluating choices yeah so uh, that would be a very valuable a lesson for your child okay now uh, because if your child knows that you've put in so much thought to it uh, then he or she is also more likely to do the same okay now um, the other important aspect that we will talk about today is saving for short-term goals 
Now, uh, this is a very important aspect that your child will gradually, as they enter into the preteen and the teenage phase, that they will learn to save for short term goals. When I say short term, it could be a couple of months that they know that I have to save up for a couple of months, then I can buy that something big. Now, um, as I had mentioned earlier when I started, out uh, that uh, saving means the child has to learn um, how to delay gratification yeah the child has to learn that if I don't buy this now then I can buy some bigger and better subsequently a couple of months down the line yeah and if your child is like shows maturity with respect to understanding how uh, finances work and money works possibly a 12 year old can even wait for a year to get something that he or she really wants yeah now um, so why is uh, saving good because uh, a it is it is teaching your child the importance to wait if your child wants something but does not have enough money you can encourage him or her to save up now um, what can your role be as parents to help your child as the child prepares to save up you can help a child uh, prepare a, a mini budget where you can ask them how much have they already saved how much does the item cost that they want to buy I suppose a child is wanting to this really expensive um, headphones okay which costs some money then you need to understand uh, from the child how much they have saved how much does the item cost how much money does your child expect to earn each week remember we talked about earning opportunities in the house yeah so allow your child to make a rough plan about how much they can earn uh, possibly um, sorry I just will go back to the next slide um, yeah and um, how long will it take to save now these are some of the important aspects that you need to focus on uh, when you are teaching your child to prepare a mini budget okay so um, how much have they already saved how much does the item cost how much money does he she expect to earn each week and how long will it take to serve uh, save yeah now um, moving on therefore as parents what is the action plan for you what is the blueprint of the action plan that parents uh, can um, use okay now uh, before we delve into what you can do, it's important to understand what are the developmental characteristics that your child is exhibiting right now by virtue of being 10 to 12 year old. Um, so the first and most important is peer approval. Okay, now you will understand for your child at this point in time, Peer approval or approval from your friends is very important. It's very important for them to keep up with the trends. OK, the other important aspect for them is interest in money. Now, gradually, uh, as if the child is entering this phase, um, the interest in money is gradually building up. So I'm sure you all will remember that when your child is about six, seven, eight years old, the child may not have been so interested in money. But as your child is growing older, there is some amount of interest that is being generated in money. Now, uh, you will also realize that your child is capable of long term. Okay, when I say long term, possibly a year or so. So planning with respect to saving and what the child needs to do after that kind of a period. Okay, now um, your child will also now gradually begin to understand the difference between needs and wants. OK, uh, so we, the entire difference that we talked about some time back, your child will gradually get a handle on the difference between needs and wants. Your child will also now show characteristics that um, uh, explain to them that money is indeed limited so they begin to show signs of understanding this money is limited there is not an infinite unlimited amount of money and the fact that money is limited your child will need guidance to understand however the value of things so for example if you go shopping um, 
there uh, would be um, uh, uh, some occasions where you might need to tell your child uh, how much you paid for a particular item because just by virtue of looking at that they will not have a sense of what is the value of that particular shoes or dress whatever game picked up that you picked up from them so they will need your guidance to understand the value of things now a very important um, uh, uh, point here uh, uh, will be uh, or I or developmental aspect here that your child will be showing now would be a concern about fairness okay so your child at this age will be very very concerned about um uh, things being fair so they'll be very concerned about your siblings uh, uh, their siblings being treated well and fairly so you have to keep that in mind when you're pairing um a, a reward plan or an allowance uh, income plan so you you may have to take those uh, aspects into account and make sure that everything is out there and everything is fair. Uh, another important, uh, important uh, developmental characteristic that a child will now display at this age would be that they can use math skills very effectively to their, so therefore financial planning becomes easy. Yeah, so they can use simple addition, subtraction, they can calculate interest and all of that, and um, they can keep track of their expenses. So their math skills are becoming sharper and better, and that will be an asset that you can use uh, very, uh, very nicely and very effectively to help your child learn better money management skills. Uh, the most important uh, developmental characteristic at um, this age, however, is the fact that your child needs to feel an important part of the family. So whatever discussions that you are having around money, uh, around budgeting, around sure that in some little way or the other, you are getting your child involved in those conversations, that your child feels a valuable part of uh, the entire uh, family and planning business. Now the action plan, uh, so teaching activities, that things that you can do with your child, extra earning, okay? So you have to find tasks that your child can do to earn that little extra money in addition to things that they um, are anyway doing in the house, okay? So those earning income, uh, earning opportunities, uh, which we called as income uh, previously, um, will uh, be uh, what uh, one thing that you can use now um, practicing borrowing and lending rules now, now uh, this is another important point establish rules and include interest in the plan of borrowing from parents so whenever your child is borrowing money uh, from you for whatever make sure that you clearly define the terms and you bring in the component of interest as well OK, so this way they will learn that um, uh, the real world also works accordingly. So interest essentially means that you can borrow X amount now because you need it. But when you earn that amount subsequently, then you will have to re return X plus Y. Then that Y will be the interest amount. Right. And that is a very important uh, lesson that you can impart to your child. Uh, the other aspect that you can uh, sort of focus on uh, with respect to teaching activities for your child is check and verify. So you can encourage your child to uh, check the prices and evaluate options uh, b before the child makes a purchase. So maybe from can verify the price and just not give anything at face value. That could be an important lesson that you can impart. The other is allowance, of course, which we've talked about in detail. How much allowance you have to give, that can be a unique family uh, uh, decision, uh, which is agreed upon uh, in uh, consensus with your children. And most important part here is for what does this allowance pay? Okay, so for example, if you are giving your child pocket money every month, then you can probably say, uh, make a rule like this pocket money is expected to uh, fund all your gift buying that you will do for your friends. Okay, or, or whatever it could be, it could vary from family to family, but this allowance is how much which is mutually agreed upon and for what it can be used. Right. 
Now, uh, why to save? Okay, uh, that is a very important uh, point that you can teach your child. Okay, so uh, you can l help your child differentiate between two kinds of saving. Uh, one is this, which is a fixed saving, which is regular saving. Okay, which is basically you plan to buy something and you don't have enough money for that and you save up for that. The other could be the everyday saving, but that is going towards a larger fund and uh, which is basically to be used for contingencies and emergencies. OK, so there's plan saving and there's regular saving plan saving for the short term goals, you know, for something that you want to buy and regular saving, which could be basically to fund uh, unforeseen situations and emergencies. These are the two acts of saving and the importance of saving that you can teach your children. Now, uh, the last point with respect to uh, the teaching activities and that what you need to focus on uh, could be to teach your child to bear the consequences of their decisions. OK, so um, so for example, um, if you as a parent can allow your child to purchase something that you think that they may not like uh, and yet you can discuss the consequences without blaming. OK, so you can allow your child to go ahead with that purchase while in your hearts you know that this is probably something that they will not like it but for once you can hold back that temptation to not let them buy it because the learning that will be there in that will be huge for them okay so they will learn with the consequences of their uh, decisions now um with that i possibly have touched upon all the aspects that I was wanting to touch upon and uh, no we are not going to be f focusing on uh, ways to make uh, money that was not what this webinar was about incidentally uh, this is a webinar uh, for parents and I hope the parents who attended this webinar found it uh, useful and um, uh, if you have any more questions uh, we can take them now um, on your screen you have of course, um, the email ID that I promised we will show again, which is expert underscore pile Krishnan at meritnation.com. Um, you can view a recording of this webinar where, by subscribing to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com at mer uh, slash meritnation. You can possibly uh, approach uh, this channel in a couple of hours from now, and you will find the webinar uh, recording of the webinar there. Um, yeah, so now we have about 10 minutes to take some questions. Um, Mr. Mukund, uh, you could respond to me. That's my official email ID, uh, expert underscore pile Krishnan at meritnation.com. And I will definitely respond to you at the earliest. Anjishnu, uh, right? Uh, uh, thank you uh, for. Uh, telling me that you will tell your parents to implement the ideas. It would have been great if your parents had attended it too. Thank you, Padmaja. I appreciate the feedback. If there is any question, uh, then we can take them now. Thank you, Amin, that you found it informative. OK, I hope you all have taken down the email ID expert underscore pile Krishnan at meditation.com. You need to write in to me to get those worksheets that I promise the one on needs and wants, uh, the one on uh, the family budgeting pie chart and for you, the, the full self uh, questionnaire that will tell you exactly whether or not you're doing enough to teach your children money management skills. What is interest? OK, Vaibhav is asking what is interest? Thank you, Samita. I'm glad that you found it interesting. Interest is what you pay over the principal amount, Vaibhav. OK, so if you have uh, borrowed 100 rupees from your dad, uh, if your dad uh, levies interest on it, then you pay him 110 rupees when you return it to him. OK, so that 10 rupees is the interest. Uh, Mr. Vedvyas, are you a parent or a student? Uh, 
Okay, because if you're a parent, um, then yes, there would be, um, a, okay, uh, you're a parent, thanks for uh, giving me that information. There would be a couple of more webinars that we will uh, line up for parents. Um, it is indeed heartening to see this response. Um, yes, we will be encouraged uh, to do more such webinars for you as parents. OK, and like I said, please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and look for this uh, webinar in a couple of hours from now. Maybe uh, tomorrow morning should be OK. Um, what are the ways to save money? What are the ways to save money? One easy way that I can uh, think about um, uh, Sai Kirtana, I think, yeah, Sai Kirtana is the name, uh, is, uh, of course, the good old piggy bank. Yeah, that, that always has worked. Yeah, if, you, if your children are small, then um, you can use the piggy bank. Yeah, and if once they become um, slightly older, you can uh, open an account for them like a joint, uh, like an uh, add-on account to your main account, and you can encourage them to use uh, the bank facilities as well. Yeah, uh, in addition to um, uh, writing into me for uh, requesting those um, worksheets, you can also write into me to give me um, feedback on what you felt about this webinar and possibly some other uh, topics um, uh, that you as parents might want uh, us to do more webinars on. That will indeed be um, uh, very uh, useful for us to plan uh, more such webinars for you. Thank you, Sai. I'm glad you liked it. All right. If there are no more questions, um, um, then I guess I'll have to take your leave. Thank you guys once again for making a very interactive and wonderful uh, afternoon uh, session on a weekend. And uh, for those of you who are Delhi, I would say that enjoy the lovely weather that uh, uh, Delhi has today. It is indeed winters. And for all of you everywhere else, um, I would like to say bye-bye and thank you so much.